Shahrukh Khan as sir am i taking gauri's place because typically your wife would sit with such you. a loaded question and yeah <laughs> Okay. And he said, "No, you are taking Kumar Mangalam Birla's place." <laughs> Earlier on, like a few thousand years ago, all the gods were female, and female are obviously superior to males, just oh. like many of the insects and animal species. Yeah, it's just obvious. Like, I, I should try not to raise <laughs> my audience. But it was audio. oppressed. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so obvious yeah. that men got fearful, mm. and they tried to. Sort of spread this new truth yes. that oh, it's men who are the leaders and, and whatnot. Yes. And then it flipped. Yes. Okay. So it told me that it may seem like just ball art, but it yeah. has its own vibrational level and it's definitely doing something to the energy of that. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, there were dogs, uh, dog weddings which were costing like hundreds and lakhs and crores, and the dog of the Maharaja of this state and the dog of the Maharaja of this state are getting married and there'll be dog procession oh god you must read Xavier Morrow's book I have it you're not joking you're not joking you're not joking I'm not joking this okay. was a time of eccentric spending and the writer is so fearless because that's the way I've tried to conduct my career I would ask anybody anything I was never politically correct um, you shouldn't have said that because now I'm going to ask you anything. <laughs> <laughs> he would sacrifice things for her. He would bring a car in for her. Like he did everything possible. Yeah. And started cheating on her now. And that's I think again just the way men. That's their weakness. They, they get bored. Right? Mm-hmm. Like you go to a jeweler. He will want to hold your hand. He will gaze into your Why don't you join us on Sunday. Where I'm going to be having whiskeys. Don't you like whiskeys? <laughs> you know. Like they want to build an equation. And they treat you like a lady. It's like that archetype doesn't exist. Because women have been educated. Now they're working. They're independent. Yeah. So you want to send me food for what? A. I'm trying to watch my diet. I cook very specific food. Uh, I, I don't that. need you to send me any I, food. I love that. I love you need that. soul food now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The irony food. He's a caveman, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go hunt and I'll put something on the table and I'm like, I don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, all in fear and they're so scared to ask me things. Yeah. But you're just doing what you want to do. Yeah. I said, yeah, but that's what makes it worth reading. Who wants to read about your toothpaste and your toothbrush? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. And then I go to your Instagram and the first picture there is of this book. Oh. And I was like, oh my god, god, that is the lady. Yeah. Craziness. Um, it's crazy that you remembered this book after a year. Yeah, and it was it was the frequency of it coming up in my intuition was more and more as this wow. trip was materialized. So maybe I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to help you with something, you're supposed to help me with something. Yes. Uh, maybe oh, together to share something. Yeah, share something, help the planet with something, yes. liberate people's crap in their minds through this <laughs> these conversations. <laughs> You should, tell that, you, you should tell that to my it's wife. Tell that to my wife. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, she shouldn't take it for granted. Very few people are constantly on a quest to grow, so that is a precious thing to have. Yeah. You know, but it drives everyone mad. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Zephyr Show. Today I am in Mumbai and I'm with Sangeeta Wadwani. And if I pronounce that wrong, she will correct it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to put people in boxes, so I'll let Sangeeta tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, what you like, what your passions are. Right. Feel free to not put yourself in a box either. So really, yeah. boxes scare me. I don't yeah. believe in them. Yeah. And I think my whole journey was about trying many things in life, but as an artist, fundamentally, I've always been a sort of a, I resonate with the goddess Saraswati yeah. because she was known to not be really a hardcore feminist, but she found the institutions created by society right. not relevant to the plot. So, okay. for example, her mythology said she represents all the arts, so music, painting, writing, you know. And she was a wandering spirit. She loved to roam the world. Right. And very interesting, there's only one temple dedicated to Brahma, who was the creator, who made Saraswati, okay. and fell in love with her and wanted to marry her. And there's only one temple in Pushkar, oh <laughs> in Rajasthan, <laughs> where there's a story, the narrative tells, the guy tells you the narrative that she was sitting at her wedding with Brahma, the creator. Yeah. And she gets bored with the whole ritual. And she yeah. gets up and she disappears. 
and the poor guy's got five heads and you know so many eyes and he's just wondering what happened to her. So are you so, her? I think so. You know, recently yes. one of my friends who's a Marwari who's helping me to find suitable audiences for my art, oh, yeah. he said, you are just such a Saraswati. You don't want to be in one place forever. You are restless when it comes to finding new equations. You yeah. want to keep learning. You want yeah. to keep growing. And I think, yeah, that kind of, like you said, no, no, not to put people in boxes. But when I heard your story yesterday, yeah. I feel you're a male uh, I'm your Sarah Swati. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah, we're a team. You're a team because you know you showed me you've also gone into modalities. You've been a life yeah. coach. You've been in fitness. Yeah. You've been helping people. You've yeah. been a musician. So I think also we're living in times where we're very fortunate, where we're not sure. struggling for the basics like the older generation was. And like you said, sometimes there's a generation gap. But we've all found ways to balance our different passions along with the practical essence of work yeah. that takes care of bills and you know everything nice. but of course for the longest time for yeah. me content yeah. creation has been my life's epicenter yeah. i think that was my karmic destiny before the term content creation was cool absolutely <laughs> we wouldn't call this content like 10 years ago this would just be books right yeah. but because now there's such a proliferation of platforms that it yeah. is now uniformly known as content so this is Mind the Gap. Yes. I really like the, the cover art. And I, I like yeah. the cartoon at the front. Do get a life. Yeah. But I'm your party for me, sure. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. this was meant to yeah. be a lighthearted take on what's happening between modern Indian educated women who are actually so now independent. Right. But the sad thing is they carry that blueprint that a man has to be better than us at every level. So he has to be financially better than us. He has to be emotionally strong. He has to be, uh, you know, uh, indulge me, make me feel like a princess. But the pity is, and the reality yeah. check is, that today the equation between men and women is more of friendship and yeah. equals. Yeah. And it's been hard for the Indian woman to, to realize that he's not the god that a man was made out to be when you were a oh, child. Oh, that's what you mean by has to be, right? Yeah, the they mothers brainwashed be. you to thinking, you know, Pati right. Parmeshwar, you worship the man. Yeah. But as you're growing and you're studying in the same institutions, working in the same offices, yeah. very often the women have better solutions or better ideas. But we're still in that patriarchal trap that a man has to be richer, more yeah. abundant, more this, more yeah. that. And the result of that is that you're kind of always looking. Yeah. And there's no end to that. D did you go back? That's very interesting you say that. Did yeah. you ever go back spiritually, historically yeah. and read about where that came from? It's, it's a mindset that I think when men were given the education benefit that yeah. women were not, yeah. women were always playing a supporting role. Yeah. It's just the way society has shifted. Yeah, so uh, I was actually very curious about that. So yeah. I read this book called Conversations with God uh -huh. by Neil Donald Walsh. Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, yeah, so he wrote like three volumes 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the most recent volume four, Awaken the Species, mm -hmm. was written like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So I read volume four first and then okay. I started with one, two, three. And he says that earlier on, like a few thousand years ago, all the gods were female. And female are obviously superior to males, just oh. like many of the insects and animal species. Yeah. It's just obvious. Like, I, I should try not to raise <laughs> but my But it volume. was oppressed. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so obvious yeah. that men got fearful mm. and they tried to sort of spread this new truth yes. that, oh, it's men who are the leaders and, and whatnot. Yes. And then it flipped. Yes. I, I, I don't. I didn't live there. But so that's I don't the know. same thing that Dan Brown's books explore. Oh yeah. Yeah, with the goddess archetype. Right. And he actually shows you that you know Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary and all the feminine uh, yeah. entities, even of the yeah. Christian faith, were yeah. suppressed. Right. And they realized women had certain powers to manipulate even nature, but not in a way that would damage or hurt nature. So then you understood how to work with the forces of nature, right. but that was considered witchcraft. When I was the, just about to say. When the patriarchy came into power, yeah. they were like, hey, wait a minute, we don't want them to have this control over nature power. Right. Right. And then you had the southern witch hunts and, you know, during the crusades or whatever. So okay. I do feel there's been a witch hunt for many. It's a subtle witch hunt with the yeah. dowry system saying yeah. that we are taking care of the bills, therefore you owe us this kind of thing. Yeah. I think a woman like me, somewhere at heart, I just could not relate to that patriarchy. 
And so a lot of people say, oh, but you're never married. I said, look at the toxicity of that. Yeah. The whole setup is against women. I know. I wouldn't want to be a woman. It is so dictatorial. <laughs> First have a male yeah. child. If you've not had that male child, you're trouble, you're bad luck. If your husband passes away, you're bad luck. You have to be avoided. This so is it's India. This whole, yeah, it's this whole patriarchal wow. mentality that is indicting you for just having the gender of a woman. I know women who of my generation who married, had an arranged marriage, could not deal with that patriarchal culture and quit on the marriage in six yeah. months and they'd be back. Good for them. So good for them. And yeah. I think I've been blessed because I have a beautiful home in Bombay, as you can see, yeah. time and space and not this, you know, sort of pulling down factor Well, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, which tends to happen in joint families where you have the mother-in-law and, you know. And you really wonder, did I miss something by not getting into that zone? And I don't think so. I wouldn't have written oh so God. many books. I wouldn't yeah. have worked for six brands. I wouldn't have traveled the world. Yeah. So I think for our times, even if we are in an equation, yeah. we would not call it the standard. If you get married, it's yeah. nice to consecrate yeah. the relationship. Yeah. I'm all for tradition. Yeah. I find there's a beauty, but we poisoned our own traditions. Right. Or then we need to kind of thread them and weed them and say, okay, we don't need this, we don't need this, we yeah. need to update your traditions. Right. You know? I think I think I think some men, even more open minded men today, such yeah. as myself, yeah, might agree with you that marriage is not the best thing. And and I'm not just speaking out against my wife, she would say the same thing. And yeah. we've reached that understanding. Because yeah. we actually watched a podcast by Joe Rogan. Uh-huh. And he had a guest who uh, was uh, he deals with psychology and he was saying you know, it's funny, the reason why so many divorces happen nowadays, yeah. and this is maybe taking it out of the Indian context of it, but just globally, yeah. is because at teenage, we're not sizing up the other person right. to be a good provider or a good partner. Yeah. We're attracted to their perfume, ah. which is a, and now that you think about it, that's yeah. every teenager. Yeah. They're attracted to the perfume and the clothes, yeah. and that has nothing to do whatsoever right. with how you're going to live a life together. And then once the perfume wears off and you're like running around the house without perfume and yeah. without a haircut yeah. and without nice clothes, yeah. you're like, what? You're looking at the other person and you're like, I married her. <laughs> is that my life? Like, yeah. what is, yeah. is that my life? Is that my wife? Yeah. <laughs> like, what's yeah. going on? And I think you're speaking Same for women, yeah. very accurately from a male perspective because yeah. just yesterday I was scrolling Instagram and there was a relationship coach yeah. whose name, I think Matthew Hussey. Okay. who was saying this and he said actually men are not wired to be monogamous mm. it's done to create family yeah. so the men have through time never found it easy to be monogamous yeah. it's always a struggle yeah. so you're letting yourself in for disappointment because they're just not programmed that way you know yeah. we produce one egg in a month you guys are producing sperms every day so like it's a different it biology. Like yeah. <laughs> I never thought about it. Like yeah, that. it's a different but biology, different level of physical desire between men and women. So it's interesting how I think through time we're getting to become more and more conscious of the nuances of long term relationships. Yeah. Right? right. And so when I wrote this, I actually this was during the lockdown. It was a lockdown effort. Yeah. I interviewed all the power chicks I had met through my profession, which okay. was executive editor at Hello Magazine. So I was yeah. at all these fun parties and yeah. fashion weeks and meeting these power corporate ladies. So one of them who speaks beautifully, her name is Devita Saraf, had taken a small business loan from her father, grown a massive luxury TV technology company, which has a valuation now exceeding 1000 crores per annum, Ooh. employs lots of women. So okay. she's sort of like a case study for this book. Right. So she was very enthusiastic because yeah. she said, Sagita, you meet all these men yeah. who've inherited. They haven't grown a business. They've simply taken it on from mama, papa. Right. The house comes from mama, papa, the business. Right. And if you have a scene or a little romance with them, the attitude is, well, I'm such a catch. <laughs> you know, and she she was so hilarious. That's... She's like, then what am I? <laughs> You're the catch, what am I? Right, right. So, and her story is so much more powerful because she's grown something but with the concept to execution yeah. from, scratch. from scratch. Similarly with me, I also, there was no history of anyone owning a newspaper company right. or a magazine. So I went into the world with just raw talent. Right. 
Right. And I wanted to make a place for myself. And that's why all these efforts came on the side. Because within journalism, you have to follow a certain kind of commercial framework. Yeah. But these were my, you know, other latent storytelling passions. This is non-fiction. And I've not really done much with this in terms of promotion. We did a Zoom with Mohan Irani, okay. a very well-known actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was my chief guest and we just had a nice round of chats and a lot of women came in um, and we had a nice tempestuous conversation nice. and Baman's view was interesting he said if you women are single it's your fault he <laughs> said the woman who married me saw me frying potato chips outside a cinema hall right. but she used to keep buying chips from me and I asked her out and that's how we fell in love and we got married right. but you women want the icing and the cherry and you just want it all, Such you as? know, like a package deal. Like he needs to look great, he needs to be Harvard or Cambridge, he needs to... You will not marry the guy frying potato chips outside the theater. Is that true? Would you? If that's what I just told you. Everybody wants one up more than what they are. So there are many people like that? Everybody. In, see, Asian in culture, India? women are programmed to marry money. Right. And I'm not saying that in a proud way. The difference now is the women are also capable of making money. Yeah. The tragedy is they're still looking for that one-up. Mm -hmm. They want a man to be better and stronger in every aspect. And that makes it problematic because if you've taken your level here, right. for you mm -hmm. to find 20x, it's not going to be easy. So you'll be single. Yeah. Well, there's also a lot of talk about on the western side of yeah. like polarity coaches and relationship coaches and all these things yeah. there's a lot of talk about how a woman or rather female at her core mm -hmm. is a more vulnerable kind of energy right. than a more male kind of energy and i feel that makes sense because that's how you are in more in tune with nature and so on so what's happening is they're only strengthening their masculine sides a lot of them right uh, so so however though mm. Would, could we say, let's say we flip this a little bit just mm. to explore. Mm. Could we say that it might not necessarily be wrong or unsuitable or you know, inappropriate or not in the best interest mm. for them to look for someone who they feel is better because maybe that's just their vulnerable side going like, I want a protector. Yeah. So then how do we balance, which I think could be a very real need. So, when you so how do we balance that and the... It's and a true the, rich seat. A lot of female coaches are trying to help women reorient themselves into yeah. their own feminine side. Right. When you become this power boardroom, power babe, yes, my friend loves fashion. A lot of them are indulging in very feminine clothes. But their basic nature intimidates men because they're mm. calling the shots. They're in charge. Right. So a lot of the men who would be drawn to them if yeah. they were not in those power positions right are sitting back and saying, wait a minute, she's a boss woman. Oh. Can I handle that energy? So their masculine has gone to this yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Their feminine is actually heading downwards. You see? Okay. So, and I also, like you said yesterday mm -hmm. about the stress hormone cortisol, mm -hmm. it tends to harden you up over time because you're used to living on that oh, edge. Yeah. Right? So if, if the man comes in being very sweet, yeah. amicable yeah. and non-challenging yeah. and an underachiever compared to who you are yeah. that chemistry is very hard to find, find that right. ma masculine feminine chemistry so that's yeah. what's happening not just in india i think that's happening in china japan yeah. like i told you yesterday yeah, that yeah, in yeah. japanese there's a whole specimen of single women who refuse to get married in japan right. because they're like you know that whole pig theory like why <laughs> you can just you're getting the hot dog, why do you want to buy the whole thing? Right. And sadly, I'm not happy to see this development because I'm a romantic at heart. Okay. I'm vulnerable. I'm very emotionally vulnerable. I've had a lot of younger men popping into my existence. And I think that's because I'm not settled, settled. So they don't get that settled energy from me. They get an adventurous energy from me. So And they don't recognize that I may have so many years on them. But being so, a traditional society, mm -hmm. eventually, there's a very funny movie called Rocky or Rani, okay, where she keeps telling this guy yeah. that the families in India are the biggest role players and the biggest spoilers, okay. right? And they always want to be the backstage control panel. So eventually, families get in the picture and everything goes for a toss. 
and they poison the young guy so much. Oh, she's done this to you. Oh, she's doing black magic. Oh, she's trying to get you. Oh, she's <laughs> after that. your money. I've yeah. heard that one. Yeah, but it's sad because actually, if yeah. you think about it, an older yeah. woman is better off with a younger man yeah. who would be there if they decided to adopt a child, have a child, whatever they want to do. Yeah. If there's a child in the picture, the younger man would be around longer. Right. So it gives some sense of security to the woman that if tomorrow if I pop it, yeah. he's there for my child. Yeah. But the sad thing, the society is not allowing that shift to happen. They're coming in with so much judgment. And my horoscope says you're not going to have a regular scenario, either a much younger man or a much older. And I don't want to deal with it. Grandpa, you know, archetype. I want a younger archetype. Oh God, that's hilarious. It is, but it is problematic. Problematic. Yeah, yeah because then we're all stuck where we are. Yeah. You know, I feel like it also be like maybe you have a more like a nurturing, um, like you said, you know how women in the olden days were more, I would say, just uh, for lack of a better word, more spiritual. Yeah. Would probably be more in tune with nature. Yes. And more. Um, Healing and more healing, healing, yes, and more nurturing. Yeah, and I think a lot of men, me included, mm -hmm. we look for uh, a lot of us have what they call mommy issues mm -hmm. because our parents' generation mm. was like severely impacted by this industrial revolution thing, yes. survival, blah blah blah. Yeah, and so they became very hard, mm. and so in our mothers, we didn't get the mother we were looking for, right? And, I, and that's not my theory, that's a psychologist told me that. And so they said when when boys don't get the mother they're looking for in their mother, right. they look for a mother in their wife. In the wife. Right. So every time you look at a relationship where maybe the woman's earning a lot, the guy's not earning, he's yeah. like laid back, he's like, ah, I took six years off. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, nothing wrong with taking six years off. But if you're wondering why, yeah. it could possibly be because um, he just wants to chill. He wants a mother mm. who was never there. Mm. And so, yeah, maybe it could be that. So the thing is, if you've not experienced a nurturing energy while growing up, yeah. how would you even know it exists? Oh, you would know. You'd be drawn to it like flies to... Maybe, yeah. If you saw it in somebody, money. yes, you would. Yeah. But I'm just curious to know whether... Yeah. So I see you as someone who's a little balanced. You are in touch with your feminine yeah. because of the work you're also doing. You know, you're yeah. guiding, you're healing. Yeah. And you're also very practical in your own way. You've set up a multi... A yeah. level platform website yeah. you've experimented with being an entrepreneur so you would come into the category of slightly more evolved yeah. indian men okay let's face that what Thanks. i find here are older men don't even want to know what your story is yeah. they just talk about themselves my dad does that there you go so as <laughs> soon as the horoscope says older man i yeah. go into that kind of total sort of recoil because I've had that, I've dated older men yeah. and they just go on about themselves and one guy was so funny, I was having a cappuccino yeah. and probably left a little milk moustache, yeah. he just grabbed a tissue and said that must never happen <laughs> and here I'm a power woman, I've traveled the world, <laughs> I've a, you know I'm a literate person and you don't talk to me like that must never happen. So I rejected him because I'm like, how am I going to deal with this patriarchy energy? I still, I call it P-E. That means this man suffers from patriarchal energy. Okay. And it's not going to, it's not going to get to him. If you want a harmonious equation, you treat a woman, yeah. a new a new age woman who's yeah. equipped with yeah. education, exposure. I mean, I've interviewed the Ambani's and you name it, the Maharajas and you've seen my book, right? Yeah. I'm not going to deal with someone bullying me. Sure, of course. I won't, it won't even last a date. I was dying to, itching to leave. And then he dropped me home and he kept analyzing me because he was into some kind of spiritual modality where, you know, you just analyze a person. <laughs> oh, it was okay. like, can I go now? Can I open this car door? And so I felt oppressed with older Indian men yeah. because they've not changed. So, so I mean, let me, let's, let's just clarify that for a non-Indian audience because yeah. this probably, this is on YouTube, so <laughs> yeah. different people. Yeah. So when you say they go on about themselves, yeah. so there's a few different things there. So when I say my dad, yeah. I mean that, and this is what my, me and my wife have analyzed, mm -hmm. because we start to talk and analyze people. And because he had a very difficult childhood, uh -huh. for him it was not that he didn't just get his mom, I think he didn't even get his dad, mm -hmm. because his dad was in the Navy. Oh. And so for him, I think he, this is my opinion, I, we've not gone deep into it, 
it feels to me like he wants to be listened to. Right. So when when I say he's going on about himself, he's going on about stories from his life. Mm. Are you referring to that? Or are you no. referring to talk about look at me how great I am yes. or something else? Yes. Okay. That the energy where it's like okay, you're a woman, you've probably not done much, you just need to look happy, decent. You right. need to be a homemaker. So what do you have to talk about? You have nothing to talk about. Oh. It's all about my life. I've so. achieved this and capable of this and this and that. Yeah. And they don't realize that, you know, then you're shortchanging your own date experience. You've learned nothing oh, yeah. from the other person. You've not been receptive. Yeah. You've not been elegant enough to ask anything. The man I there's one like okay, there's one character who lives in my neighborhood right. who walks his dogs in the morning. Right. His proposal had come for me. Thank God he couldn't make up his mind and I was busy with work. So it didn't have to, it didn't culminate. But they were very wealthy. So within the community, they're like, oh, this is a great opportunity for your daughter. They have a hotel here, they have a hotel there, they have this, they have this, they have that. Thankfully, I didn't end up with him. I, got, I married my job and he, with his superiority complex, ended up with a divorced woman who realized that he had very little capability to actually be successful. Everything was an inheritance. So he could live off interest if he wanted to, right. he didn't need to exert himself. Right. And he had that ego the size of a building, right? So she couldn't handle that. So she quit on him because she was better at making money, better at business. And then unfortunately, I started a non-profit for the arts where we used to go from gallery to gallery, get people who are creative to sing, dance, write, share poems. It was a very nice movement reflecting something that happens in New York. Oh. This guy was, we were common friends. It was an American lady who started it called Janet Fine. So he was in one of her friends' yeah. circles. Yeah. She died of breast cancer. Two years later, I had a morning dream that you should try and bring this back because the city needs it. Right. A non-profit. It's all about celebrating art. Yeah. So we had a meeting at the Sea Lounge. I asked him to help me build the community. So he shared all the contacts. Yeah. We started things. The moment he was not interested in the hard work. The moment the media came in the picture, started talking to me, saying, what is this all about? Yeah, yeah. He wanted to take it over completely. He oh. said, you are not to send mails. You are not to send invitations. It's all about me from <laughs> here onwards. You are not to talk to media. It's all about me. That's not even trying to hide it. <laughs> like... it's, it's, it suddenly, the oh, agenda man. was, it's all about him. Okay. And we tried to make it work and everyone said oh what a romantic team you guys look so good together and everything but i was stressing over my job deadlines and this guy would take dates for these events when i was heading to the press when he knew and he does not want to physically be around so what he would do is you make the program you get us the venue don't show up it's okay it's me i'm the god here so eventually you can see how toxic that could have been in a marriage it, it wouldn't have worked, even though he's next door to me. It, yeah. Who cares about your hotels? Not like you're going to write them off to my name, right? So it would have been a very unhappy situation. So while working together when I was unhappy, I would tell my father every day, how do people live with Indian men? How do people deal with this kind of egoistic? And then I found out he's some spectrum of autism, which means that when you have COVID, I had fever and he's trying to come back into my life again. I had COVID, I went to the doctor, I took a couple of B12s, I was mm -hmm. very drained, yeah. very weak. Yeah. You know what he asked me? How much did you spend on the injection? Because? Not, he didn't message me once to check, are you feeling better? Oh, wow. How much did you spend? How much money did you give the doctor for your injection? I said 500 bucks. He said, do you know the actual vial is only for 30 rupees in the store? This is how despicable some of these guys are. They're just not programmed to be intuitive, sensitive, or think of another person's perspective. Today, if you had COVID as your neighbor, all he would do is say, I can send you food. I said, I have a maid who's cooking for me every day. Why do I need your food? Right. Ask me how I'm feeling because I've come to that level of independence. Right. I need you emotionally now. I don't need you to take care of my day to day. Right. So yeah. that lack of evolution. I, I it's read that so online. chronic. Yeah. yeah, I read that online. Like uh, uh, women, something I think express or something by by sharing their emotions. And especially now today, yeah. I don't need yeah. you to buy me food. I yeah. go Dutch. I go square with you. That's not the level of relating women want, especially now working women. Yes, the ones who are total parasites, like you know, want to be like their mothers, just live off whatever your husband gives you, manage your life, whatever. Yeah. If it means compromising all your desires, do it, be good to him. 
that archetype doesn't exist because women have been educated now they're working they're independent yeah. so you want to send me food for what a i'm trying to watch my diet i cook very <laughs> specific food uh, i, I love don't that. need you to send me any I, food i love that i love you that you need soul food now you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The irony food. He's a thing. caveman basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go hunt and I'll put something on the table and I'm like I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the food thing is by by the way a legit concern for all health uh, conscious people. Naturally. And just not not just from their mates. Imagine he telling his staff how I like my salad and how yeah, I like yeah. he'll say she's a total flip out. Yeah. So he still don't understand why Sangeeta's not into me. Right. But he's pushed all the wrong buttons. Have you told him? How do you tell a man? Oh, how can you ask me about the price of an injection? Be a little elegant in life. And you know what he said earlier? None of the women in Bombay want to be with him, despite the hotels and everything. Then he just doesn't know how to be large-hearted. He won't pamper you in any way. It'll yeah. be like, why did you spend five hundred bucks getting well when you could have tried to get an injection into your own body and spent thirty rupees? Yeah. And nobody is that poor living on Karmaika Road. Then he should marry a slum-dwelling woman. Who values that kind of saving? You know, it's a it's a very cheap mindset. No, totally. Yeah. And you I can't understand. tell a man repeatedly that your reputation is down because you don't know how to pamper women. Mm. Forget pamper. You don't even know how to be sensitive. You can't tell him that. How can I? He'll reject it. Um, He's an old MCP. Oh. Uh, okay. Nothing's ever wrong with an MCP. I, yeah, I mean, I feel that's so sad that this was put in the people's heads. I think I maybe told him that. I like in three days you have a message me saying, "Are you feeling yeah. better?" And I don't care about the price of what I've taken as yeah. long as I'm on my feet and I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It, it still doesn't make sense to him right, what right. women want. So I wrote this book, but the yeah. pity is I need to print copies. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how to get it out there. But these men really need to read it. Oh, yeah. See, like when the other woman or man is your phone. So a lot of relationships today are compromised because people are just on the phone. Right. Okay. A se- secret of seduction: the art of listening. And younger women are better. Uh, men are better listeners yeah. because the women in their lives are stronger, mm-hmm. and they have a point of view. The older men have grown up with women with no point of view. They don't read the news. They just get fat. They have the babies. They run the home. So those men are used to that feminine archetype, right? Right, which is not to these yeah. women. So there's a mismatch. So the whole book, and this is about being casual, physical, yeah. which is another big pressure that I find. Men now are so used to having that fun that it, they they don't even think you qualify to be in their life unless you're willing to do all that. Mm-hmm. You have to sleep around, be easy. Then now what's happened is gone to another level, especially in the suburbs where you have the millennials. The girls don't want to be with one man; they want to sleep around with everybody. Really? Yeah. So one of the younger men who initially liked me, yeah. till I was honest about my age. Um, Just fell out of a relationship, and he's heartbroken because the woman didn't want to be loyal, and she was right. living with him for eight months. Right. She refused to be loyal. He went into her phone. Oh, I I met somebody like that as well. Yeah. Who, one of my fitness clients. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't say who, obviously. And he was like, "Yeah, my girlfriend didn't just didn't want to be committed, and so we just broke it off." I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, saying this guy was in shattered. That's that's and so strange see, for me to hear has, that coming from Singapore because there's the opposite. What is it like? It's there? like girls want to be committed, committed and yeah. guys don't. Yeah. So, so I'm saying India is going through phenomenal shifts, which even right. I've not fully comprehended. But what I try to do is base this on true stories. Talk nice. to a lot of people, email a lot of people, and right. I want this to be out there so that you know this old school man has to evolve. If he doesn't, he's going to be a loner. All the guys on Bumble and Tinder over a certain age, over forty, who's their wives have left. Right. It's not been the man saying bye bye. Mm. All the guys I've met of that age group, the wives have walked away saying, "We just don't want to live with you anymore." That's interesting. So that's yes, it's a huge statement. Right. But sadly, in India, we're not doing a lot of social surveys, and you know, we don't tabulate, we don't find out what the numbers look like and who left whom. Right. You know, right. had we done that kind of research, a data institute, maybe they need to conduct more relationship surveys. Yeah. You see what what's going on with India. I guess. Yeah. You know. That would be useful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one book. Yeah. Um. You also have two other books. Yeah, I have four in total. The first one is out of print. It's called Shakti in the City. Again, like you asked me about my journey. Um. When I saw the rise of female power when I was in college, I. 
I dedicated a series of short stories to women coming of age in the city. Right. And I call it Shakti in the city. Right. And we have to keep this in mind. Bombay's women will have very different stories and journeys than women in the north of India. The north of India, the patriarchy is still very dominant. Right. Now, there's a plus side to it where they want to protect you, look after you, you know, assist you, facilitate, be committed, be married, have children. All that's very much alive and still in the north. Right. The downside of it is you can end up leaning on that man, building your entire story only around the home mm. and the heart. And I just recently, I was at a conference where there was yes. a friend of mine from Delhi whose husband started to cheat after, I think, 20 years of adoring her, where she was a rock star in the marriage. He would sacrifice things for her. He would bring a car in for her. Like, he did everything possible yeah. and started cheating on her now. And that's, I think, again, just the way men, that's their weakness. They, they get bored, right? Mm. But she couldn't handle it because it was coming too much into the picture. So she decided to quit for a while and she's come to stay with her sibling in Mumbai right. and now she's struggling to get on her own two feet so she comes from a lineage of dancers so she was she had created her own therapy where dance mudras yeah. you know yeah. which can be done on your office desk and all can yeah. be used to facilitate wellness and she was teaching that but probably not in a serious business like way right she was probably doing small groups and everything right. But now she said, I need to scale up because I was used to a lifestyle, which at that time was funded by my spouse. Mm. But I need to move out. I can't live forever with a sibling who's also single, but happily single. Yeah. And uh, I need to build my own existence financially. Mm -hmm. And she said, Sangeeta, in Delhi, they yeah. just lump it. They just swallow the man's infidelity. Man is disrespectful if oh. he has a drinking issue. They lump it and they live with it because they've not worked on building themselves yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. financially. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. Right? So, those, yeah. if I was living there, those stories would not have been these stories. So, Shakti in the city, interestingly, came out from, from my years in college and the early years working and exploring Bombay as a journalist. And I had very deep insights because I was going through a lot of spiritual work at that time. For some reason, I was being guided to do Reiki courses. Then I had a Shakti Pat Kundalini rising experience all in my 20s. So oh. that book has hugely, deeply philosophical insights into relating, instability, that family values, everything that was like looking like it was shifting to me. I'm very energetic and a young mind and an inquiring mind. So it's still one of my favorite books. Sadly, out of print uh, because the publisher shut shop. So each copy is now being sold by second and third vendors. I don't see any of the royalty for 4,000 rupees on Amazon. What? Because it's out of print. It's considered rare and antiquated. Oh, it was okay. launched in 2000. Oh, you mean like um, old old versions? Used like versions a rare versions. book. Right, like, right, right. You know, limited edition rare. Yeah. So any commodity that's rare, the prices appreciate. But none of us, none of the royalties are coming of my course. way. Yeah, yeah. They come to the middlemen. Yeah, yeah. So people are reselling it. Yes. People who own the book once. Yes, and you'll find second-hand edition valued at this and first-hand edition and good condition. And it amuses me how the book business works. And yeah. one actress I had interviewed who was a very serious, like an art house actress, yeah. Nifty Naval, okay. she said, if I were you, I would have pitched it to someone to make a series, like a web series. You still can. Yeah, so they'll have to locate a copy because I, I probably gave most of mine away. I may have one somewhere in the house. Did you have the script at least? In an old laptop. <laughs> So I have oh, to wow. buy my own book back, get it retyped. I make have sure you one make, in the Make house. sure you make a YouTube video about that. That's yeah, be a I will get story. it retyped and reset and reprinted. And yeah. I need to do that with mine. So this was published by the Amazon printing arm. They have a, okay. a facet of their business that prints on demand. Okay. So you're not wasting copies. That's but cool. it's a thousand rupees a copy, right. which is not feasible for me to distribute. I want Literally, I want to hand this to men that I've met. Right. Yeah, I was Bombay. just thinking like, you should have given that guy the manual. They all need it. <laughs> all the guys over 40 who grew up in a world where women had no voice, no will, no decision making power. Yeah. And then they just talk about themselves and they kill the relationship before it has a chance. Nice. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so let's just briefly touch on these two. Sure. Before we go into our other topics. Sure. So actually, yeah. we're still on our first topic, which <laughs> is always Sangeeta. <laughs> and it has taken a nice arc. 
But I think well, the books tell you a yeah, lot about me, sure. right? So, yeah. so what's this one about? So this was interesting. So I was uh, quite taken in by the shifting values in our movie stories. Okay. And oh. where, you know, see, movies are sort of the spiritual barometer of a society. Um, there was a time the hero could never go wrong. You could never kill the hero. There was a distinct vamp who did the sexy stuff. And there was a virtuous heroine who did the good stuff, right? So that kept people in a comfort zone. Mm. Everybody from the villagers to the urban, they all related to archetypes. Ah. But as I was seeing in college and then later that the vamp and the heroine are merging, the woman has to be sexy regardless. You know, the wife and the girlfriend are always now hot and sexy. Yeah. And they do all the item numbers, whether it's like, Sheila, Sheila, <laughs> ki And they numbers. have to be very sexual <laughs> oh to God. make sense today because the men now are so programmed to look for that. Can, can, we, so, just, can we just tell the audience what yeah. an item number is? Okay, Nobody so, knows what that means outside India. So as you probably have heard some very racy dance tracks that usually make a film uh, come to life in terms of promotion and marketing. Um, the woman, the, the female lead is often made to perform these songs and they're beautifully orchestrated. They're just brilliant. So like even a song like Akon, when he came to India and he, he sang, You are my chamak chalo. So these songs, because we live in the age of virality, tend to go viral around the world. Right. You know, recently Deepika Padukone's song in Pathan, Hame tolu ya milke ishq so that went viral. I saw YouTubers doing reviews from everywhere around the world. Right. And they all assume that the woman is singing, whereas in Indian tradition, it's always a backup singer. And she just is kind of going with lip the song and lip yeah. syncing. Uh, so, but it, this item number becomes a big part of the formula to sell a movie. So so, so know? that's okay. So for an international audience, you've described what a dance number is. Yes. Or song and dance number. Yeah. What is this word? Item. What so that mean? it's a slang. It's a colloquial way to describe it because item, you know, in in like if for example a woman is hot, okay, yeah. and you have these sort of working class guys having a cup of tea in a cafe somewhere out, right. and this hot woman is walking by, yeah. they'll go pew, you know, like yeah. they blow a whistle, and yeah. they're like, yeah, item, right. <laughs> you know. So item basically means a hot chick. Okay. And when you do item number, it means a hot chick performing a really hot song. Nice. Right? And that That's becomes... like every movie now. So it's part of the success formula. You yeah. know, it's what draws you to the movie. Right. Whether it was Pathan, yeah. whether it was Sheila Ki Jawani. They're so iconic now, all these songs. Yeah. Recently, they had Chalaya. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's not even central to the plot. But it's the <laughs> yes, I... Yeah, it's just I can But oh, what yeah. this book was trying to say is that means now that woman is not so virtuous. She has shades of grey. The hero is also shade, 50 shades of grey because Shah Rukh Khan's first film, he was actually cast as a man throwing women over the terrace of a building. And he was the lead, but he was a psychotic lead. Was that Bazigar? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was Bazigar, yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah, Bazigar, right. Okay. And uh, he was a psychotic hero. He wasn't a healthy, normal man. He was obsessed. He was stalking the heroine and uh, responsible for murder. So there's so many shades of grey in day-to-day -day life that sooner or later that has seeped into the scripts and the characters. Right. So when I wrote this, I was a journalist at L'Officiel magazine and we were featuring a lot of personalities from the movies, but I didn't want to be superficial and just get the star narrative because the star narratives are everywhere. Mm -hmm. I always told the star, I want to see you, how you work, how you relate to the women on the team, how are you treating the technicians. So I met Shah Rukh. So you know how you manifest things when yeah. you're on a project, on yeah. a journey. Yeah. So I first wanted to get the lyricism back in my work. So I quit my job, not quit really, but I took a three week sabbatical. I joined an adult creative writing for professionals course in Scotland, in Edinburgh, where they don't know your history. So if you're producing mediocrity, they have no problem telling you that this is uh, crap and you need to go back to your room and you need to work on it. Right. So we had a Greek. I was very fortunate. I wanted to, you can see my obsession with mythology. I wanted to build mythical archetypes, movie archetypes, character archetypes and weave them in a narrative. Right. Very ambitious kind of way of working. Right. And we had a Greek uh, teacher who was very attuned to God and Goddess archetypes from Greece. Okay. So she made us do exercises where we have a conversation with a God or Goddess. And the yeah. Goddess that I chose was Ma Kali, who represents the era we're living in, the Kali Yuk. 
Right? I, yes. I don't know if you've heard of Mahmali. I have. Yes. I, we could go into that for hours. But yes. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so I wrote as a class assignment a conversation with Kali and then we had to present it to class. Oh. And imagine you have Irish people, African, UK people, Brit people, yeah. never heard of Makali. But the character was so vivid in the dialogue that they all got goosebumps. And I read it with that kind of force and power, you know, like as so I had a latent Durga inside of me. So I read it with that really like powerful intonation oh, and they freaked and I think I taught my class in one assignment at least, not every assignment but that one. So when I came back I said you know nobody's updated mythology for the times yeah. and maybe that's when my book hasn't reached the critical mass. Yeah. Again you need marketing muscle for everything and content now people find very hard to digest right, right large. Right. Yeah. But had this become a series, a web series, a movie the filmmaker would have a picnic recreating a conversation with Kali addressing today's existential questions from a young energetic writer. And the writer is so fearless because that's the way I've tried to conduct my career. I would ask anybody anything. I was never politically correct. Um, you shouldn't have said that because now I'm going to ask you anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, but back in the day people were like really like wow, like I met Subhash Ghai and I had red streaks with my hair okay. and I was very blunt with him on many things about how he portrays women and everything. Uh, and he said, you know, they're used to treating media like the kind of poor cousins, like they live far away, they don't have a lot of money. But I wasn't that kind of journalist, right? Like in India, unfortunately, it's a lot about demographic. Yeah. So when I was really brave and at least interested in impressing the guy, he just said, you will to ask me anything. And if I ever make a film with a journalist, I'll make her like you. She will be having the red hair <laughs> and she will be asking me many things, which nobody has the courage to ask. <laughs> They huh. ask dar dar ke mar ke, you know, because he's a powerful man, right? Yeah. Who journalists are there, like, you know, all in fear and they're so scared to ask me things. Yeah. But you are just doing what you want to do. Yeah. I said, yeah, but that's what makes it worth reading. Who wants to read about your toothpaste and your toothbrush? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Oh, and that's, that's how that. So a lot of people yeah. behind the scenes, yeah. I wanted them to be part of the narrative. Nice. So, because star narratives, like you know, they're overexposed. Everyone knows. When I met Shah Rukh, it was at a yeah. America had a variety magazine awards night, yeah. and I was at that time throwing fifty invitations in the bin every day. I couldn't keep up. <laughs> but when I saw variety magazine awards, I said, "Okay, this sounds nice." This was in some ballroom at Seven Star, and my date was late. I had a friend picking me up, and his mother had an exhibition. Because he was late, we entered the ballroom and the lady in charge, when she said, oh, L'Officiel magazine, she said, listen, I, I think your seats are taken. But fortunately, we have a seat next to Shah Rukh Khan in the front, right, the front table. And there was Kumar Mangalam Birla's name, name tag on my chair when I was pulling it back. Now, you know who Birla is, right? Yes. The oldest corporate industrialist. Yes. Yes. So apparently he had gone missing. He wasn't coming. <laughs> okay. So I'm pulling the chair, sitting down. Yeah. And uh, I asked Shah Rukh Khan, I said, am I taking Gauri's place? Because yeah. typically your wife would sit with you. Such a loaded question. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. and he said, no, you are taking Kumar Mangalam Birla's place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we had a fun, like ice breaking night. I handed my card and what a man, you know, I had chatted with him nine years ago at L magazine. And at that time, he wanted to meet and I just, I said, you know, I don't want to make it to Film City. Yeah. Too much time gets lost in coming there. Why don't we just do this? I need a quote from you. Let's do it over the phone. Yeah. He so could not get over that this writer doesn't want to even meet me and she doesn't want to hang out with me at Film City. Yeah. He never forgot me. Right. And I had an accent, maybe a mild one, not a really, I don't have an Indian accent. I have like a nowhere accent, yeah. right? So he was very intrigued by that. He kept saying, I want to meet you, I want to meet you. You sound interesting, I want to meet you. So that night when I gave him the card and he saw Sangeeta Vadwani, he said, we spoke mm. nine years ago. Yeah. You didn't want to meet me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. So, but wow. then I said, I said, Shah, Shah Rukh, I'm working on a novel about your industry. Yeah. And you know, I'm, if I ask you questions, I know all that's everywhere. Right. So I want you to show me how you work. So call me when you're doing a photo shoot. Yeah. I just want to observe you at work. Right. And he gave me the magic words and the numbers and every day, it's everything. And I and actually got to see him at work. Right. Amazing. He had Preeti Zinta on his back when he had a slip disc. And right. he wasn't complaining. And it was the style team that was worried about him. 
Right. They're like, Sharo, like, dude, you know, you have a slip disc. What are you doing with Preeti's and turn your back? And that's the kind of insight I wanted into how he works. Mm -hmm. He's known to elevate people's energy wherever he goes. Right. And I think he's a hugely blessed man. Definitely. So anyway, so a lot of these anecdotes are part of Bollywood on the bend. And I'm hoping one day it gets picked up for an OTT show because it has a lot of lot of insights. It's very rich. Right. Including going into Indian philosophy, Indian archetypes, you know. Yeah. And the quest for fe feminine actualization. Because yeah. lead characters are women. Yeah. You know, Ananya. So it's a love triangle. Uh, the writer, who is a reflection of me, comes in after 9-11 comes to Bombay, meets a film producer. Oh, there's a story about... It's Arif. fiction. Oh yeah. my God. So, writer coming from right. New York after 9-11, scared to live in New York alone. Her parents tell her, go to India, you have family there. Parents are in Hong Kong. She comes to stay here with cousins and family. But she finds that archetype very oppressive, where the women are only programmed to marry. Right. And we're talking about the 90s. And she has a young cousin who's not allowed to take up a job because it won't look good on the family name. So this she bolts out, she goes and meets this film producer who she meets on the flight, tries to work her way into writing a movie and then she meets this really eligible cute guy called Siddharth who is the young director training with the old fellow. The old fellow is modeled on Subhash guy who is flopping across the board. The young fellow says you need fresh blood because your formulas don't work anymore. Right. So the whole movie, it's called Bollywood on the Bend. It's telling the story of young blood coming into the business, mm -hmm. old people being rejected by audiences for their formulas, yeah. the the strengthening and the, the sort of detoxing of patriarchy in cinema, and how also this young team gets down to write a very new story, but they're leaning on the archetypes and they're redefining them. Do you, do you realize yeah. you said the whole movie? I hope people make it into a movie. Yeah, <laughs> I, as you said that, I got that same shiver down the spine feeling. Oh, so then I'm happy. dying for someone to pick it up. It's a great it movie. Probably will, yeah. When? Yeah, hopefully in my lifetime. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Bollywood on the on bend. On the bend. With real appearances from a Ritik and you know, if they made this film like with a Farah Khan as a director, I can see her doing a great job. Why don't you write to her? Uh, they don't read the book. I've actually handed a copy to Karan Johar. Yeah. They pass it on to the assistants to read. Why don't you give it to Farah? I'll send it to her. I'll call her and I'll say I'm an amazing. But the thing is, they don't have time to really read a book. Right. They can read a synopsis. Then they'll give it to their teammates to read. Right. Then whether those teammates come back and actually read it. So actually, uh, I haven't told you this yet but yeah. because it didn't come out. Yeah. But my wife's cousin mm -hmm. is actually a director. Uh -huh. I think he started as a producer. Now he's a director. And he worked with Shah Rukh Khan's company, Red Chilies. Fantastic. Yeah. So maybe we could Let's hook try. you guys up with them. Yeah, I'll try and do a tight synopsis. He just had a kid, so he's a yeah. bit busy right now. Okay. But uh, I'm sure, I'm I, sure he's I'm not really, quitting the business. You're feeling the shivers in me that's meant to be a movie. Yeah. You can imagine I'm talking to Kali. I'm yeah. asking about commitment issues. Yeah. And Kali's solution is that, you know, you see me killing things all the time. You need to declutter and you need to keep killing things because... If you go into things with the heart, your heart is your most precious uh, body yeah. part. You are constantly slicing it. So be dispassionate. Whatever you do, be dispassionate, be detached. Yeah. Now, all these archetypes have never spoken in cinema. It could even get me into trouble like a Salman Rushdie. But Salman was dissing religion. I'm actually giving it a voice. I'm actually saying, give me solutions. But some people would, yeah. But some people would also argue that Hinduism isn't really religion; it's spirituality. It's a lot of spirituality, yeah. but we do have icons, right? We do True. have our figureheads, and they've got True. their narratives. Yeah. And all we're doing is teasing that narrative a bit for our times. Yeah. We're saying, how does it work for our times? Right. And I, I would love to see this in an OTT show. I mean, yeah. it would lend itself to many episodes. Yeah. No, and definitely. then we can create new seasons I was, because as, as I was, as I was, as you were talking, my Guy popped into my head and it said multiple YouTube channels. There you go. <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah. Okay, so this this is the one that I got from you. Yeah. Encounters with the, the rich, rich and famous. It's also kind of heavy. Yes. And because big. it's a pictorial book, it's yeah. very rich and illustrated. Yeah. And this kind of encapsulates 20 years of lifestyle and celebrity journalism, where you can see the range of people. There's MF Hussain, an iconic artist who's no more. Yeah. There's Aishwarya, there's Mr. Bachchan, there's Princess Dia Kumari. Yeah. So, Princess Dia, the first time we met her, she was in a kurta, which I've captured all those images. 
she just met us like a regular woman in charge with a lot of responsibilities with the fax machine and you know it was old school and lovely yeah. but as we started featuring royal families the lo- lady especially ended up working out they lost weight they got into beautiful designer sarees and nice. they realized that we represent a legacy so hello was responsible to bring these families back into the forefront because the indira gandhi regime actually tried to cut them out of the picture completely because. they took away all the privileged money that the you see earlier they were part of the tax paying structure no, so didn't. they had privy purses from the government to maintain right. the monuments the palaces oh. the festivals and they were patrons right? right they were sustaining artisans and all that so there was a structure where the government the newly formed republic had privileged purses for the royal families to sustain what they had but right. indira gandhi was a socialist right. and when, and there were crazy things that some of the maharajas were doing which didn't make sense when india was yeah. completely bled by the british uh, colonial time yeah. so she said now each one has to sustain one more and i want an egalitarian world i don't want this crap they you know they had pigeon sized diamonds and i mean there were dogs uh, dog weddings which were costing like hundreds and lakhs and crores and the dog of the maharaja of this state and the dog of the maharaja of this state are getting married and there'll be dog procession oh god you must read zevia moro's book i have it you're not joking i'm not joking this okay. was a time of eccentric spending right okay. one maharaja fell in love with a dancing girl in spain who was broke brought her back made her a white maharani and built her something that looked like the palace of versailles i can see myself doing that <laughs> for, a, for a woman you love yeah so and she was broke her family was bankrupt they literally sold her to this moor you know they looked at them all black men as moors but he was a sardar maharaja from kapurthala so all these stories so we were able to get into that whole historic period and i have to tell you it was super super engaging cuz i like i told you i'm a romantic those days lovers would hide themselves into like you know a suffocate themselves to protect a lover's reputation hide in these look little like boxes and castanets and yeah. even if they were being gunned down through the box they wouldn't make a sound because the maharani's reputation is important so there were all these like really? chivalry, yeah stories of chivalry what? of immense love <laughs> and you know there's a we, we need we need to do more videos yeah. <laughs> this is the one video is too short yeah yeah with the men who yeah. if they were having an affair with a royal princess or a queen yeah. they would sacrifice their lives to keep her going to keep her reputation wow so that was the age of chivalry so when we used to visit all these palaces i used to go to my own like dreams or you know i used to say oh i can imagine this happening here and that happening there and then it's still alive in rajasthan there's still a sense of chivalry mm-hmm. it's a sweetness it's not that toxic patriarchy like yeah. you go to a jeweler he will want to hold your hand he'll gaze at you why don't you join us on sunday we are going to be having whiskies don't you like whiskies <laughs> you know like they want to build an equation and they treat you like a lady it's when, like when, when sorry sorry when did that happen recently i've been going to the jaipur lit fest Okay. So I always end up visiting my jeweler friends there. I used to buy these little, like you know, Jaipur. I still have a Jaipur ever. Wait, like random jewelers or jewelers? No, you build know? an equation like multiple oh, jewelers, okay. and once they get to know you over time, okay, 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 and they'll always say chai lo, thanda lo, okay. garam lo, like right, you know, right, feel yeah. happy, yeah. and they really make you feel like you have a gender. What tends to happen here in the city is you could be any gender from morning to night. You don't remember. I've had guys opening doors for me, and I go to culture shock. I'm like, huh? Oh yeah, of course. You are a man. You will open a door for me, because it's not <laughs> part of Bombay life. <laughs> oh, is it okay? Everyone's going Dutch. Everyone's expecting a fling on the first day. Where is the? There is no perseverance. There's no poetry. There's no. You know, there's a beautiful quote. I remember Neetu Singh, Ranbir Kapoor's mother, who was also uh-huh. an actress, right? Yeah. She said, "Aajkal wo ye zamane mein na wo thehrao nahi hai." Thehrao mm-hmm. is a beautiful Hindi word yeah. that means. cultivating things slowly tehro means to wait yeah, yeah, yeah. so patience so she said you're not in that age of perseverance and patience and idealism you should watch the gayatri yeah. devi interview with simi garewal on youtube there's an unabridged one okay. where she trip because her life encompasses the change okay. right she went from being a princess of baroda yeah. third wife of maharaja jaisingh of yeah. jaipur mm-hmm. and the bbc at that time they were very like 
let's make a scandal out of the fact that she's the third woman. So they used to come down to do interviews and she was named by Vogue UK as one, among the 10 most beautiful women in the world. So the media was always hounding Gayatri Devi for interviews. So they told her, but in our part of the world, the third woman is the mistress. She's not a wife. And uh, isn't that intolerable? Isn't that a scandal? So she would say in India, we respect women so much that if we love a woman, we'll marry her, whether she's first, second or third. Mm. But we give her the status of a wife and a queen. So they call her Maharani, you know, Gayatri Devi. They didn't just call her Rao Rani. Rao Rani is when you're just a whore who's your, you know, mixed your genes with the royal genes and then you produce bastard children. She was called Maharani okay. Gayatri Devi of, and lovely books about her as well. That's nice. And she was progressive, right? So she insisted that there should be a girls' school. So she started the MSG girls' school in her name. Uh, she wanted women to come up, not wear the parda. There was a tradition after the Muslims left mm -hmm. to have women in parda. She said, that's not us. We're not going to be like that. She used to smoke. She used to go hunt tigers. At the age of 12, she shot her first tiger. But that was a royal pastime to go into the forest and shoot. But, you know, then when I met another Maharaja of Kishangar, he said, we always had eco-sensitivity, we didn't need it from PETA and all these world bodies. If we knew we shot so many animals for our hunt, we would let the forest regenerate the populations. During mating season, no hunting. Let the animals repopulate. Then you take your hunts. And there also they would keep a head count of the trees, of the flora, the fauna. So I learned, it was the richest time of my journalism career when I was at Hello wow. because people are so well endowed with values. The further back in time you go, you start seeing the values yeah, that drove yeah, yeah. them. Understand. It's values where we deteriorated. Interesting. It's values now which have been confused and it just saddens me. We've thrown love, love in the bucket. It's all about lust and mm. sometimes it even disgusts me the way people mm. behave. Mm. Because you know you're a writer, you you're looking for the story. Where is the bloody story? Mm. You know, people jumping each other's bones is what the monkeys are doing. So how have you? Are you evolving? Are you devolving? Are you going back in evolution? Yeah, but I, I think I think uh, I think to be fair, like uh, or to be more neutral, um, if we look at it from another perspective, yeah. Um, we might also be losing these values. Yeah, I'm not saying we should lose the good ones, but yeah. I'm saying like. Maybe people nowadays, because some of us are becoming more conscious, we want to question like everything. Yeah. Maybe to the point where overthinking sometimes. Right. So maybe maybe a balance would be. I think what works right. for people at a soul level needs to be prioritized. If you're yeah. just consuming people, consuming yeah. products, consuming yeah. food, yeah. Uh, then you've just lived at the level of the body. You've not cultivated anything deeper, truer, more beautiful. If you come into Urdu poems, you see movies like Umrah Jan or even Jodha Akbar. Mm. You'll see that, you know, love used to be stirred like a nice slow cooking, <laughs> slow eating affair. Yeah. And that's when it touches your soul. Yeah. If you're just at that, I'm telling you, just at the five senses, you're not evolving. Oh, and the yeah. tragedy is suburban Bombay has become a jungle of lust. You know, yeah, I think yeah. the girls just literally, I was chatting with a journalist friend of mine who's got friends in that millennial age group. They're literally like they're consuming men, like monsters. You know, okay. you can't, how are you commoditizing people, reducing them to body parts? I mean, give yeah. me a break. Yeah. So I'm a little like now not so in sync with what I see here. Yeah. And I think there's more depth outside India, yeah. outside Bombay, not Delhi and all. They're still a little more traditional, but mm -hmm. definitely the suburban jungle, I'm not so enamored by it. Okay. Sobo still has an older generation, right? So their Sobo still will have that respect. What's that Sobo? South Bombay. Oh, South Bombay, South, yeah. But then again, it's like a senior citizens on conclave within the city. That's Everyone's true. much older. Much older. So yeah. it's not even very exciting. You know? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So that was um, Encounters with the Rich and Jeffrey. Famous. But then here you'll have Bachchan's story and you'll have like Hema Malini and what, how, you know, as a Manglik lady, yeah. she wears a Mars uh, red stone. Manglik women tend to be the third party in a lot of equations, right? So, uh, so she was cast as the second wife, which in our modern world is not given its due recognition. So she had built up a world which was filled with the arts. Every evening they like diyas in the house. You know, they detox the atmosphere. She was raising these two girls as almost like single. She had a partner, but he was not in the picture. 
She had the respect of a wife because he married her. He changed his religion and married her. So that way, Hema Malini was a bit lucky. But there was a despondency because every woman wants the husband to be in her life, mm. in her home. Yeah. But then she flipped it around and he talked to her. She said, but then today I can have a political meeting. I'm opening a dance school. I travel. I do my ballets. And I'm not running around a man. And I have to see the positive in that. Awesome. Imagine for her yeah. generation, that's a huge evolution. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then I asked him, I said, but as a second woman in, in a triangle, uh, did you ever feel hurt when he was acting with other girls and, you know, with a wife? And, so he said he was always a gentleman. He would never do things to hurt me. He was proper like a, he's a, what you call a jat. Jat Punjabi men, very romantic, all heart. So she said he was always a gentleman. Now where do you see that kind of gentleman code? I even wrote a story in Hello saying, gentlemen have died. I see so <laughs> many. I, I, you know, as you're saying that, I'm having so many alarm bells go off. Yeah. And I think my generation would. Um, because, uh, are you 30 something or 30, 36? Yeah. Okay. This October. Yeah. So, so then there, there would be many men and women in many cultures and many countries would be like, I don't care how gentlemanly he is. It's a one wife deal or no deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you're not allowed no, to go sleep really, alone. Unfortunately, Whatever. she had really fallen for the guy. Right. Her mom tried to get a hitch to a single actor called Jitendra. Yes. But some... I think Jitendra was going to marry a Sindhi woman called Shobha. Right. So Shobha orchestrated to get Jitendra, uh, to get uh, Dharmendra to the wedding that was planned between Jitendra and Hima Malani. Obviously, mother told her, you want a man to yourself, why would you want to share a man? Yeah. And Dharmendra came disrupted her and said, I'll change my religion and marry you. So it wasn't her first choice. Oh, okay, okay. Sometimes you're hopelessly in love or you're genuine. I mean, so yeah, nice. this so I don't Sometimes. think at a practical level, she always knew it's a compromise, right, right, you right, know, right. but don't forget in the movies, you're anyway in an alternative reality. You're shooting so many intimate scenes. You're so much with that person yeah. that you think, you know what, we, I really can't love anyone else. I love this guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's no, that's tough. definitely possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you are maybe meant to be together, but in that weird way. Yeah. The Mangal star does. The Mars in a woman's horoscope, it creates a lot of these issues. Rekha is heavily, even more Manglik than Hima Malani. She's always been the third woman and not even acknowledged as a wife. And there's a lot of sadness. You look at Rekha's pictures. Yeah. No matter how well maintained she is, there is that vacuum because she never got the respect of a wife, which in her generation was everything. Right. You know, she came for a Hello Hall of Fame awards. Sri Devi had recently committed suicide or passed on. We don't know what happened with Sri Devi. But Sri Devi was again a second wife. He divorced his first wife and married Sri mm -hmm. Devi, Moni Kapoor. Mm -hmm. So she said it with so much feeling. She said, Sri Devi Boni Kapoor is no longer with us. Mm -hmm. So you could see the importance of having the name of a male spouse. Because Rekha never got that. Right. But she still has the love of the master. She's yeah. immortal. She's just on Bob Arabia cover. Now that so you, she's, yeah, yeah. you mentioned that, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, it kind of slipped my mind, but even my dad's mom mm -hmm. uh, married twice mm -hmm. and my dad's dad married twice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, after they were married to each other, they, and, and we were friends with everyone. Okay. So yesterday I just met, uh, so Farad that I was telling you, yeah. the journalist, um, he, his mom was my dad's dad's second wife. That's a little confusing. Uh, my my dad's uh, uh, dad. Right. So your yeah. grandfather's Married, second wife. Yeah, second wife. And so and we're still friends, and we had a nice chat. Well, so look at Alec Padam. See, yeah. he married three women, right. and all the women are friends, and all the kids are friends, and Not, they have big family bashes. That's crazy, though. That is absolutely crazy. He did it because he's at Muslim. the same time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Padam is a Muslim, so he's allowed to do it. And uh, they're all strong women. Yeah. There's Pearl Padamsi, the first wife, yeah. whose child, Rail Padamsi, is very big on NGOs and theatre. Yeah. And there was uh, Sharon Prabhakar, who was yeah. the third woman, who was this hot, you know, item yeah. singing on stage. Uh, so actually, actually, have, do you follow Teal Swan? No. So she's this spiritual uh, leader, I mean, there's a, a thought leader online. Yeah. And she released a video on poly polygamy. Uh-huh. 
and actually there are a lot of clues and signs and stories about like previous generations uh-huh. like not this far recent but way back where and I've, I've been having this more and more and me and my wife we were discussing because there was this guy in the friend circle who tried to touch her and oh. then denied that he tried to touch her like uh-huh. i'm all for everyone touching each other right. if you agree that it, that's what we're doing get consensual yeah, yeah and and also just be honest like, yeah. even yeah. if it's not consensual just yeah. like say like, oh man sorry i just Your wife was too beautiful. Yeah. Yes, I, I prefer that rather yeah. than oh no, I, I didn't do anything. Right, right. So we were having these discussions, and I told her maybe there's nothing wrong with what he did. Mm-hmm. He's just embarrassed because, and just like Teal Swan was saying, actually all humans just desire connection. Mm. So maybe marriage is a sham. Like this whole like yeah. male female. Yeah. Not 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 that it's not valid that the energies need to mix and blend and blah blah, but maybe it's. just a modern day construct mm. but i the, there's no actual answer to that because yeah. some species in nature they do do just like one partner but you're saying modern day construct yeah. i feel is a modern day deconstruct the modern yeah, world is too. just tearing it apart that too that too yeah because yeah. we're going back towards spirituality yes and not ah, only so. that the see this what nf was saying the artist told me yeah. he said it's redundant today the woman doesn't need a man for economic power yeah. uh, women are widely available man doesn't need a woman for yeah. sex right So what used to keep marriages solid, rock yeah, solid, yeah. that foundation is no longer there. Yeah, yeah. It's so true. the compulsion that I have to attach to this one person for the rest of my life yeah. till death do us part, yeah. that foundation isn't there yeah. to keep it going. That's true. You may be drawn to someone who's more evolved as along with your journey of evolution. Yeah. Your husband may not be evolving. You will drift apart. It's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can't even sit on judgment. Earlier, there was a lot of judgment. Right. People are so de facto about it. Like, okay, we grew apart. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And it's honest, you know. It's true. Yeah. I'm. I'm happy to say that me and my wife were at that stage where we talk about everything openly. Yeah. We even ask the question. Actually, why are we together every week? Yeah. Not in an angry way. Yeah. Just exploring. Yeah. Just exploring. So, so yeah. Um, for kids, yes, I can see that you yeah. need to build a nest for the children. Correct. So there is a nice function to marriage because it, that's it. Yeah. But you're right; it's very hard to know where who you will be tomorrow, who he will be tomorrow. Yeah. If you're able to grow together, you're in a happy yeah. situation. Correct. If only one person, and that's the problem with these older Indian men, they're not willing to change. To grow, yeah. So it looks toxic from the outside. It's very arrogant. Yeah, okay, and so it's toxic. Can... All yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so actually, you and I, with our personalities. Go on chatting for days, yeah, yeah. but 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 before we end, yeah, or at least this episode, I wanna uh, let's just talk about something else as well. Yeah, that was a good lunch break. Yes, thanks Cindy for the home cooked meal. Yeah, yeah. nothing curry. like home cooked food. Yeah, it's just it's comforting and comfortable. Yeah, and easy on the belly. Yeah, so I I wanted to chat a little bit about how we met and how this meeting was sort of meant to be. Mm-hmm. And maybe from there we can talk a little bit about spirituality and some of the new work you've been doing and so on. So actually, what happened was um, I visited Crossword. I know you've heard this a few times, yeah. <laughs> but for the audience now, yeah, yeah. So I visited this really nice bookstore called Crosswords, which I've been visiting since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So I love to read. Mm-hmm. And over the last two three years, my career was taking a bit of a transition. Mm-hmm. And so I was walking there after lunch at Plate and Pint with a fitness client uh-huh. who I previously only met online when I coached him, and he's a Parsi guy. And so as we were walking, we were discussing our careers because even he's quitting like a shipping, long time shipping career to now open his own organic farming uh-huh. aggregator website, okay. which links farmers who organically farm uh-huh. to consumers, maybe such as yourself, right. out here in India. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so as we're walking through the shelves, we inevitably ended up at the showbiz shelf because yeah. I'm always looking at the music stuff. And then we see your book right up there. Yeah. Um. And as I see your book, I have this imagination of this lady called Chelsea, uh-huh. who I saw on Netflix. Um. Who just like you knows a lot of famous people. Has met a lot of them. Had a had a show come out where she's sitting at a round table with. Um, the singer from Imagine Dragons, Wiz Khalifa, I believe uh, Mary J. Blige or another uh, African American singer, and she's the only non like musician artist there, but she's an artist in her own right. Mm-hmm. And as they're going around the table talking about each person, they come to her and 
So she was like, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Because they were all opening up about their insecurities about work. Mm. And she was like, I don't even know who I am. I just know I like to be with people. I like to talk about entertainment. So here I am, and this is my show, but I actually don't know what it's called or who I am. Like, there's no <laughs> box, right? Yeah. And so I'm thinking, I'm realizing, oh my God, that is me in the Singapore music scene. Because um, they can't figure out, like, is this guy a drummer or a singer or he produces? Because I do all of it. Uh, and they, I'm not very cliquish. I like to make friends with everyone. Right. And so I'm remembering your book more and more before this India trip happens. And I'm thinking back to that crossword. And I was actually thinking I'm going to go back and buy it mm -hmm. because I want to read about what she did and how she did it. Mm. And I'm just having more and more thoughts. And then on, I think it was Thursday or Friday, the day you were there as well. I was having this thought in the morning, oh yeah, crosswords, I gotta go there later. Mm. And so we go to Just Low Hospital mm. for my dad mm. to see his eyes. Uh, sorry, to, to talk to a doctor about a potential stroke, oh. uh, which he doesn't know happened. Okay. Because there are parts of your brain where you could get a mini stroke where you don't know, because maybe that part of the brain just controls your eyes, yeah. and he has eye problems. Uh -huh. So he suggests eating at the Chinese place next to you know, Kim's Corner. And I was like, no, let's go to this other place I know. And so I walk in and then I sit down with him at the same table. I sat with my client Nansha the previous year and we look over the table where you're sitting there with Chaitali. And I was like, first I could only see Chaitali's face. Right? Yeah. And I was like, she's doing a reading for you. After a while I saw you explaining and I saw the head movements and the hand motions and I was like, and then I kind of saw your aura. And then I was like, this is a seriously witchy person. <laughs> I need mean, to talk to her. But what do you see in a witchy aura? It, um, I don't know. I just, I can instantly, it was a feeling. It was a feeling. It was a... Um, so it wasn't something you see. It was something I, you I, sense. I do see people's auras. Yeah. But that day I saw, I sensed you. And I, I just, I was like, I'm, I have to talk to this lady. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> so I went over and talked to you. Yeah. And then um, you gave me your card. Yeah. And I still don't know that you're the author, right? Because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, it's just like some Indian lady yeah. who, you know, encounters with a Richard famous. Because yeah. I wouldn't pay attention to the author's name. And then you pass me your card and I go home. And it's a busy day. We're running around trains and buses and cars and all sorts of stuff. So I was like, okay, what's the lowest barrier to entry here? And I see your Instagram. So I was like, oh. okay, Instagram. So I go to her Instagram. And then I go to your Instagram. And the first picture there is of this book. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, God, that is the lady. Yeah. Craziness. Um, Absolutely. It's crazy that you remembered this book after a year. And it was, it was the frequency of it coming up in my intuition was more and more as this wow. trip was materializing. Wow. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to help you with something. You're supposed to help me with something. Yes. Uh, maybe oh, together. To share something. Yeah, share something, help the planet with something, yes. liberate people's crap in their minds through this, <laughs> these conversations. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but then also we got talking about the tarot and, yeah. and thanks for the reading you did. Welcome. Uh, and so you, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about, it, it's obvious to anyone who knows anything about spirituality when they look at all this and your face and blah, 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 that you're into spirituality. But do you want to share a little bit about your spiritual journey, journey? Yeah. without yeah. a 30 minute description? I'll try and be quick. So yeah. basically I was uh, inducted into a Reiki one class right. after my cousin Vishal, who's now a well-known musician, had Reiki in his house. He had a Reiki class right. and we stumbled upon it. I was intrigued. I said, what are all these people doing? Right. Mm. So I met the master. I enrolled at 25 at the age of 25 and that journey sparked a greater engagement because I kept meeting people from different spiritual walks of life right. and I started exploring all the different pathways that were opening up right. including going through Kundalini Arise uh, Shakti Path experience at 27 right. and I think that worked very well with a career like writing because yeah. in writing you have a moral responsibility to make the society reflect on change for the better that's the way I see broadly you know okay. And you're also supporting other lives and journeys by saying this person's achieved this, this person's achieved that. So it was a spiritual career intrinsically and not a profit-driven career. The fact that it became profit-driven happened on its own. That was again the universe doing its own number where the dot-com scene arrived and then the salaries multiplied. Yeah. But so this all I would credit to the awakening of the Kundalini, which was the Shakti Path experience which I had at 20, in my 20s. 
and I started taking my art a little more seriously because the universe planted me in the Times of India building, which was just a walk away from the JJ School of Art, which is Bombay's most renowned, iconic mm -hmm. art institution. So I told my editor, if you don't mind, for a few months, I will leave a bit early because I have class. And I started there fidgeting with pastels and oils and different mediums. And that's when, when I was losing my dad, he had a stroke, he was bedridden. I had to spend more time at home. Then I started buying into this and I even called a teacher home from JJ School of Art. And I said, I want to do a series on gods and goddesses. And I also think, Zephyr, that when I was a kid, my mother wanted us to read Amma Katha stories. Oh, I know those. You know those, right? Yeah. So those are the stories that tell you about the mythology of India. All the stories of Shiva, Krishna, so on and so forth, the Ramayana, and the Mahabharata. So those images were so deeply ingrained somewhere in my subconscious mind that when I started to put brush to canvas, they were the first entities that appeared. Right. So Krishna and all his beauty, Shiva and his meditative uh, tranquility, then the combination of the two, the Shiva Shakti. And right. a lot of people come home now because these works have been up on the wall for 10 years almost. Yeah. When they come home, even if they're calling entities or they're playing with darker energies, they are not able to connect with them. I had this experience recently, yeah. very ambitious friend yeah. who believed in fire meditation, fire manifestation, an Aryan friend who has materialized and manifested an incredible career journey. And we were home from a night out and he kept throwing his diamonds on the table and here and there. And then he said, you know what, there is this entity that is making fun of me right now. Mm. And uh, it's a very playful entity. And I can manifest it and show it to you in my eyes. Mm. But the more he spent time trying to get it into his eyes, then his eyes become demonic, which we've seen in photographs. But he wasn't able to call it in my house. He said, oh. it's just your house is deflecting this energy. Right. So it told me that it may seem like just wall art, but it yeah. has its own vibrational level and it's definitely doing something to the energy of the yeah. house. No, for sure. Yeah. Oh, there are the sugars again. <laughs> See? Yeah. So there's a lot of truth in what I'm saying. Yeah. And maybe the spirit guides are saying, yes, there is a lot of blessing. And I I do feel protected by my own art practice. And a lot of it has spiritual meaning. I even experimented with uh, non-figurative works during the lockdown, mm -hmm. which became about the planet. So right. do you want me to hold up a few? We could hold up a few or we could, I could just, uh, I could just take the camera and yeah, we could talk okay. as we walk. I need to spread them out because they're all over here. Yeah. And even like you're seeing the ohm over here. We can show this on camera. This one. Yeah. I love this one. Yeah. This again has, it's called the Himalayas. So you see a combination of snow, sunshine, yeah. and then the ohm, when you change the angle of the work, yeah. it becomes a third eye and a threshold, which is Shiva's weapon. Wow. If I, if I just twist it around, it becomes yeah. a third eye. So a lot of these works yeah. are imbued with very cosmic and very spiritual vibration. Amazing. And that's why when you asked about the selling part, it's never been crystallized in my mind whether I want to sell, no, do I not want, because they've been part of the collective energy here for a long time. Right. But sure, people said, we really like this, can you make us one? I will make you one. Insane. You know, the Shiva Shakti. Yeah. And so are you also going to go further into like the tarot readings or card readings? Or? Yeah. So the tarot was oh. like you saw in my house, I've got lots of different decks, yeah, lots right? Of decks, yeah. So thanks to my spiritual experiences, wherever I've traveled, I've tended to be drawn to tarot a lot. And uh, when I was at Times of India, I would spend my evenings with the tarot reader at the Oxford Bookstore. And I had this deep fascination for this art of div divination. Mm. And given how uncertain the times we are living in, I think having um, a, a medium to see where you're heading, to get that guidance is very, very empowering. Yeah. So recently I've been enrolling in a lot of courses. Okay. Some of the decks come with the booklets that explain you know, the meaning of the card, but I want to start to internalize it. So I've done, I'm doing a diploma, then I'm doing a mastery with an Indian teacher and a UK based teacher. Wow, that's And insane. let's see where this journey goes. And then of course my, my work is, I've always been listening to human stories. So this would be taking it to the common man, right? Earlier it was rich and famous, but now I'll be helping the everyday person yeah. share stories and also get guidance. That's amazing. And like, I don't know how the session felt for you. How did it feel? It, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was good, very reflective. 
Yeah. Made me think about what I'm doing, not doing, some skeletons in my closet. Right. Um, like we all have those shake, rattle, and roll skeletons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, I've adopted weird methods of manifesting dreams, like I told you. And it's always interpretation. Some people will say, that's a skeleton in her closet. But to me, it was just a clean, clear intent that I put in the universe. Like meeting Shah Rukh Khan at the Variety Awards. I just came back from Scotland and I said, how do I manifest Shah Rukh Khan? It's <laughs> going to be such a task. Right. And the universe placed me on a chair right next to Shah Rukh Khan. Right. Similarly, this was such an ambitious project. I was like, how am I going to manifest 25 lakh rupees to go into print with a coffee table book? Right. But the universe put just the right person in front of me. And he said, it's not a big deal. I'll take care of it. You focus on the book. Right. Similarly with the Regis, they just, they just said, we love the concept, please go ahead and launch it yeah. <laughs> at the hotel. So I do feel if you come from a space of honest uh, desire yeah. and you never had malice and you live with a relatively clean, pure spirit, mm -hmm. then the spirit guides always help you. Yeah, I do feel that. You would know that. Yeah, yeah. I actually had that happen with a song where I first released a song which was trying to copy like, as you do as a beginner, trying to copy my idols, produce that same way, blah, blah, blah. Uh. And the song came out and a lot of Indian, okay, so I got to say this, like, I don't know, maybe Indians are just more fertile. Yeah. They're just more horny. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but all the Indian men and women I showed it to, they were like, whoa, dude, that's an amazing song. Huh. And then in Singapore, we were like, it's so misogynistic. Oh. And I was like, I'm just singing about a chick I met. Huh. I sent it to her. Yeah. She likes it. Yeah. I like it. What's yeah. your problem? Yeah. And they're like, no. Can't put this shit out there. Oh, so then. And then I had another song, uh -huh. which was a way simpler song. I uh, wrote it on all white keys because I didn't even know how to play the piano yet, so I didn't venture into the black keys yet. Okay. All white chords. Yeah. A love song. I uh, wrote it for my wife. Very simple production, and it was my first fully self-produced song myself. Nice. And that song was on MTV India, v, uh, MTV Asia, VH1 India. Wow. The video. Uh -huh. Um, and I was talking to a, a host in Singapore, Anita Kapoor, who was interviewing me because mm -hmm. um, I was setting up a channel where we interview musicians and stuff. And I told her, like, I was, just, I was just so shocked. Like, people dug this song so much more and it went so much further. And then she was like, yeah, because you're doing it from the heart. Like, mm -hmm. you're trying to copy or just... What was just, the name of the song? Uh, Sail Away. Okay. Yeah. I'll try and find it. It's on my YouTube channel. On YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So I did two songs that are on YouTube. Nice. One was a, a copy of a mashup where we combined guys like you, but I converted it to girls. Sorry, yeah, girls I made like it guys you. like you. It's yeah. actually girls. Yeah. And that was Maroon 5. And then we took Rahman's song, you know, Tere bina pesuadi, pesuadi. And so this was done by Jeffrey Iqbal, who's a UK based okay. musician. And okay. I love the entire mix and the production value so I took it to a friend who runs a production company music production and I yeah. said if he can replicate this I would like to do the voice mm -hmm. and as a friend he said okay you know do it in your Sunday or whatever your spare time so yeah. I was working Monday to Friday yeah. I went in and it didn't take very long to put it down so that means I'm a decently decently recordable singer yeah, right? yeah. And and you're doing the pictures and all that yeah, yeah I was able to get that going and within yeah. a short time we had a beautifully mixed replica but only thing it was the lyrics were adapted to a woman, not to a man. Right. So that's on YouTube. It's called Guys Like You. Okay. And Sangeeta Wadwani. And the other track was something I wrote in my 20s when I met a rock band living nearby where they were saying rock in India is dying. Okay. It has no future. Yeah. And uh, but so he had all these pre-recorded pieces and scratches and he made me hear them. Mm -hmm. And I started hearing a song over the scratch. So I put, it, put down the lyrics, but we forced ourselves to do it in Hindi. Because at that time, the whole business was about Hindi. Right. We could not do English. Right. So we did it and it was called Jiyo or Jinido. And it had all the existential angst of a single woman thinking, why is marriage so repugnant to me? And why can't I find my soulmate? And why is Bombay so challenging to matters of the heart? And the same angst was in Shakti in the city, but I put it into that song. But recently, I re-recorded it as a ballad, not as a dance track, mm. where the depth of the lyrics resonates far better. Mm. And I made it also about sustainability mm. and existentialism versus consumerism. Mm -hmm. Like finding the beauty of life and the joy of life, being in nature and saving the planet. 
So I gave it a whole new fresh twist. Yeah. And I shot footage in the Maldives. I'd gone there for a break. I wow. shot in the Himalayas at Dev Prayag. So that song has a very spiritual, very pandemic mood. Right. And yet it has a groove. It has tabla beats. I put layers and layers on it. So it's a very rich sounding track. Now. Yeah. I shot at a beautiful step well also in Gujarat. Right. And it has a very Sufi feel because a lot of whirling that I'm doing. Okay, I want to check it out now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was whirling. Just it just happened. Yeah. And and also one last thing I wanted to end with was uh, oops. One last thing I wanted to end with was I don't know. I mean I didn't tell you this uh, yesterday when we met, but. You know, when I walked into the cafe where you were sitting there, because I was like five minutes late, right? Huh? I noticed that you were a little stressed out on your phone. Yeah. And your face and your energy was a little shrunk. Uh -huh. But like one hour into our conversation, I remember having a second thought going, Yeah. Oh, look at her face now. Yeah. It's like lit up. Yeah. And, and it reminded me of something you said, which was, we live to, our, our souls expand when we meet people. Yeah. And when they're giving. So do you feel that's true for you? It is very true because I find yeah. it so hard to converse with a lot of men here. Okay. Very sadly, that when you meet somebody who's well read, well exposed, traveled and worked with different modalities and worked with people, it is an expansion. You've led a very expanded life. Mm, okay. So that was a pleasant thing for me to encounter. That I, I could actually touch upon that. many things when okay. I'm talking to you. So naturally, and you, even as a journalist, when I was talking to people, yeah, wanted, yeah, that okay. learning was always feeling expansive. expansive. And I've been missing that because now right. it's not a full-time preoccupation. Right. I've given it a good part of my life. Now I want to work with these modalities and, you know, be a wellness advocate. Yeah. So of course it was a joy to meet someone like you, so well-read, well-exposed, it it spiritual, yeah. You should it tell that to my wife. Clean, you like, should tell that to my wife. It's there for her to see. <laughs> Yeah, because I like yeah. Yeah. But, No, she shouldn't take it for granted. Very few people are constantly on a quest to grow. So that is a precious thing to have, yeah. you know. But it drives everyone mad though. So Sometimes. don't engage with everybody. I live on my own. I do it like sure. a hermit. I just keep trying new things. Yeah. And nobody has to hear about it unless they want to. But now, yes, this is a journey I'm taking pretty seriously yeah. because it makes me happy. I've done a reading for you. I've been reading for friends. Mm. And I just feel if I'm supporting other lives, that's what I was doing as a writer. Right. And if the writing industry has shifted a lot, then this is a very good way to take that connect into my future. Like so this people would you can... ever be combining your newfound um, sort of skills yeah. with your whole life passion yeah, of yeah, yeah. So uplifting I'm, the planet? Would I'm, you ever write about yes, this stuff? Sure, because see, okay. I'm going to probably encounter many lives yeah. again. I'm going to learn from those many lives. I'm going to, with their permission, see if there's something they'd like to share. Right. And I was contemplating a book called Bitches and Witches yeah. because I was called a witch by this eccentric German lady in Pune who just felt my energy and she said, look, you don't look anywhere near what you say or age is. <laughs> so you're 100% you're a witch. And, and she said, you know, oh. frankly, I have these arts that I want to pass on to a new generation. Nice. But because she was senile, she wasn't communicating. Ooh. She didn't want to share her number. She was senile and she was a bit racist. So I had Ooh. to let her go, okay. you know, because they don't want to be in touch with Indians. It's a very weird thing. A lot of foreigners, they forget the guru that they've come to meet as an Indian. Yeah, yeah that's what you know? So when they talk about Indians, it's a very derogatory way. And I actually remember telling this woman, Hey, but you're here for Osho and Osho was Rajneesh and Rajneesh is Indian. So just in case you're, you're forgetting that, you're yeah. in India for your Indian guru. Yeah. But there is still that covert there racism. That. You know? But yeah. she was, she gave me, she did a blowtorch in my head because I said, okay, maybe I am a witch, but in a positive way. Not, I'm not out here to destroy lives. I'm here to facilitate, right. uh, shed light on people's lives and help to see them evolve. Right. help them to get direction yeah. so that's a very positive journey so i'm super super excited i'm training with a uk coach i'm training with an indian coach in nice. tarot so okay so just to end off um how could anyone contact you if they want to engage uh, you for services write up about you showcase your talents to the world yeah so very easy my yeah. my instagram handle okay. s-i-n-d-h-y crawford it's one word okay. cindy crawford at Instagram okay. and you can DM me. I'm hopefully going to upload some 
content related to my new work. Right. And uh, you can also reach me on my Gmail ID, which is S-A-N-G-I-T-A dot W-A-B-H, W-A-N-I, and gmail.com. With any queries that you have or if you want a reading, just let me know and I will come back to you. Cool. And we'll, uh, we'll put those links in the description so you guys can check them out. Yes, and if yes. you're hearing this on the podcast, then head over to the YouTube channel to get the links. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so lovely to meet you, Sangeeta. Absolutely. Thank pleasure. You. Yeah, a wonderful <laughs> I still pleasure. think I feel very lit lit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful. I hope all my episodes go this way. <laughs> Insane. I'm so Thanks happy so much. we were able to converse and touch upon so many yeah. things. We have to do another one next year. Yeah, there are many little trajectories to yeah, follow so on. many. And I'll probably meet very interesting people yeah. on this journey. Yeah. So India has its own parampara of witchcraft. And they had these archetypes also who were healers called Dayan, you know, who looked after emperors when they were growing up. Oh, they, that I've not heard of. Yeah. So if you watch movies like Jodhapur, uh, but a lot of, like you're saying, in the West also the crone, you know, who's like sort of the mature woman who's guiding and guiding. Yeah. They became notorious for having powers that men could not handle. Mm. So they were also thrown in the shadow and they were called Churel and Dayan and this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a negative connotation to witchcraft, which I think is high time people got clarity on it. It's just understanding how the universal energies work. Anyone who's a Reiki channel has also got a superpower. So it's not just the witch who calls herself the witch. But if you're a Reiki channel, you have a superpower. So everybody can uh, engage with natural forces. Everyone can educate themselves. Full moon, eclipse moon, this, that, graham. It's just science, like any science. And it's how you apply that knowledge mm-hmm. that distinguishes whether you're the good witch or you're the dark witch. That's what's important. You have to work with ethics. Great message. I can't talk that. So <laughs> let's end with that. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Thank uh, you. Take care and see you on the next and episode. And I hope to hear from you guys. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.